دكتور مينا ده حضرتك اخبارك منور اوريدي فتحت لايف ستريم على اليوتيوب اند ماي فويس از اون متأكد على اليوتيوب إن الشاشة فيها الفرق. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. My dear Basel colleague, uh, we're going to speak today about upper limb vascular duplex scan. Um, uh, hopefully it will be of, uh, of benefit. Because you will see a lot of indication for upper limb vascular duplex scan. Okay. Upper limb vascular duplex scan. Um, the etiology of upper limb venous thrombosis, you will see it a lot, a lot of clinical indication. Uh, a lot of people will have CVP caster, it's one gans caster. A lot of people will have cancer, physical strain, if they are moving the upper limb quite a lot, like painting of the ceiling, this can cause subclavian venous thrombosis. You will see a lot of hypercoagulable state, drug abuser, they come with multiple thrombosis, obesity, steroids, also pregnancy. A lot of these situations, you will have an upper limb um, presentation with upper limb edema or thrombosis. Now, what is the difference between veins in the upper limb and lower limb? This is the anatomical picture of veins in the neck. So the first thing is that you will notice that there are plenty of veins. What is the importance of having plenty of veins? That sometimes you get the main vein occluded, but you get multiple collaterals. So it's very important, very common mistake to get subclavian vein occlusion and you get multiple collateral around it. So you must be sure where is the vessel and where is the collateral for the occluded vessel. We mentioned in the lower limb, Compression is very important. You do compression to preacal vein, common femoral vein, to detect the thrombosis. In the upper limb, compression is not that important because you cannot do compression to upper thoracic veins, like the uh, internal jugular vein, uh, the uh, subclavian vein, especially the part which is under the clavicle, or the innominate vein, right and left innominate vein. So upper limb. Compression is not that important, but what is important is the image. So you must squeeze your information out of the image color and the spectral waveform and to compare it to the other side. And this is important between the upper limb and the lower limb. Common mistakes, as I mentioned, that you get a lot of upper limb collaterals. And these collaterals can make you confuse that the vein is dilated, while in fact the main vein is occluded, but you get a reactive collateral. You don't see that in the lower limb, but you see it a lot in the upper limb. The upper limb technique, again, you make the patient lie supine, 
and use five megahertz a small footprint transducer is preferable because you want to go to the base of the neck and to see the innominate vein. You can use linear seven to 12 megahertz for the rest of the upper limb, but the area which we will show on the case inside the chest is the area which is difficult to compress and you need a small probe. Sometimes you use the abdominal probe because you have a deeper structure. So you need between two to five megahertz in order to see the central veins. And supracarbicular vein for central vein cannulation is also uh, important to see. And infracarbicular vein, you can do compression to this vein and um, you can do measurements to this vein, which we will do. So this is the technique for upper limb scanning of the arm veins. Uh, some patients have limited study to the arm. Sometimes they have either recent AV shunt that you can't remove the dressing and so on, but you want to squeeze information or they just have CVP catheter that they want the, uh, the caster dressing to be removed, which is difficult. You must have a trial technique covered by oxide in order to know is the caster in the place or not. Now, compression for upper limb, we said it is difficult, especially in the central vein, sometimes not possible. So what we do, a trick is called the sniff test. The sniffing, the sniffing in Arabic is istinshaq. What is a sniff test? A sniff test is you create a sudden negative suction in the chest wall to see if there is a flow in big veins or not. Let us have an example of a sniffing. This example, I will try to use the mouse, yes. Here is the innominate, right innominate vein, left innominate vein going to superior vena cava. When you ask a patient to sniff, because you cannot do compression, here is the picture after sniffing. You see the blood is being sucked by the negative intrathoracic pressure. So here, without color, you can say that this vein is patent. Why this is important? Because you will see, if you especially if you are a vascular surgeon, you see a lot of dialysis patients. You get dialysis patient with occluded superior vena cava, indominate vein, subclavian vein, catheter related or non catheter related. So this is very important for us. And always, when you are doing a duplex scan, know that duplex scan is here to answer a clinical question. You always have a clinical presentation. You do not just do duplex for, for the sake of it. You do it because you're suspecting central vein thrombosis, peripheral vein thrombosis. You're doing for upper limb mapping before every shunt. You want to know the diameter of the cephalic, the diameter of the basilic. Is it above three millimeter or below two millimeter? Is it suitable or non-suitable? And this is a sniffing test, which we will use uh, over the demo. Here is the subclavian by compression test. So you can see here, this is subclavian artery, subclavian vein. But I'm not sure, is this one thrombosed or not? Because I can see it to shadow here. So is this thrombosed or not thrombosed? Sometimes you can do compression tests like this one. So this is a compression ultrasonography, which we do in the upper limb. You see, here is the vein. So now you are sure that there is no thrombus without color, but you cannot do this for superior vena cava or innominate vein because they are uncompressible veins. So you do sniffing test. This is the upper limb venous anatomy, and I did send a chapter about how to do upper limb duplex scan, which contain the anatomy. This is the um, right innominate vein, which is the subclavian vein, internal jugular vein going together. And this is the left, and this is uh, the superior vena cava where it goes to the heart. So this is the basic anatomy. Now, technical consideration. Uh, use a small footprint transducer to allow easier central evaluation. So not all the machine have this, but it's a kind, they call it baby, baby transducer. It's a footprint. Sometimes I use the coronary transducer uh, trying to pick up information about central vein. And we'll see what we're able to gain. Color Doppler is easier in the lower limb rather than in the upper limb. Use color sniffing test 
instead of compression, because as I said, compression in the chest wall is impossible. Bilateral study is very important. If you are in doubt, if this venous thrombosis or not, look at the other side. Compare the waveform. See during breathing and um, and see the waveform on the other side. This is always give you the clue about the diseased part. Now, breath holding, uh, sometimes you tell the patient, hold your breath. Or sometimes you do valsalva vanover, which makes the vein to be dilated and to be filled up so you can pick up color. So sometimes you need to ask the patient to hold your breath. And whenever I tell the patient, hold your breath, I hold myself my breath. So don't take a long time before telling him, okay, you can breathe back again. So in order to memorize, so tell him, hold your breath, and you hold your breath as well. And this is the way you can know uh, that maybe don't cross 30 seconds or, or so. Upper venous protocol, usually we go from proximal to distal. So you start from central vein, internal jugular vein, and go distal. And one of the important points in the upper limb vein not just as a thrombosis, but, but direction of flow. Where is the blood flow is going? Because you will see a steel phenomenon, which uh, you get a reverse flow from the internal jugular vein. So instead of the blood going down, it will be going up. So it will have the same color as common carotid artery. So this is important. Again, we'll go to the, uh, the protocol, which uh, use image, spectral Doppler, and here you will have to know the CVP waves, which is ACV wave, the three wave, because here you are very near to the heart. So always you get the pulsation from the heart into the central uh, venous wave, totally different from the common femoral vein. Uh, and this is the, the wave that you'd like to see. Long axis and short axis, if possible, you try to get both axes for the central vein, internal jugular and subclavian compression you can do compression to jugular vein axillary vein arm vein peripheral vein but you cannot do it to a nominate vein and superior vena cava you can't do it now germ, normal jugular vein here is the the picture you want to rely all your tools for duplex b mode here it is i can see a big jugular vein common carotid artery now you can use TS and LS. Both of them give information. Now you put color. So you put color uh, into the uh, jugular vein. And you also notice the waveform. You see this waveform is not like the respiratory uh, variation in the common femoral vein. But this waveform is a, a waveform that you will see it for ACVP. And it goes with the heart pulsation. And these are the central wave form. So you get three information, black and white, color, a spectral doubler. You need all the three to get information. Not a single one give you the full story. So you must collect all the three. And this is general rule in duplex scan. Upper limb doppler finding, as we said, central vein are pulsatile with phasic variation. Peripheral vein have only phasic variation, but they are not pulsatile because they are away from the heart and the pulsatile variation can be increased or decreased and bilateral similarity always when you look to one internal jugular vein look at the other and color filling of all veins is important this is another picture of the innominate vein so you can see this is the innominate vein on the b mode you can see the transducer is not linear transducer this is a convex transducer because you are going deep down. So you can use the abdominal transducer, which is two to three megahertz, and maybe you try to increase the frequency to five. And here you see the color, and you can ask for a sniffing test and so on. And here you put a Doppler probe and see is the ACV wave that you see in central line. So these are the waveform that you can see, and this is the information that you will get for right in nominate vein. Um, this is again the uh, right and right and the left in nominate vein going to superior vena cava, and this is the um, waveform into the superior vena cava 
And this is a beautiful picture. You wouldn't get this picture in every patient. And it takes time. And it takes a good acoustic window, a good probe, and a good patient, not a very fatty patient, to obtain this image. It's not an easy image, and we'll see when we do it on, uh, on a live demo. Now, here is another picture of live subclavian vein. And I got a very nice request here that between the two weeks, I will try to present the venous pathology. So you have one chapter to read. You will see live case. You will have a quick information with this lecture about uh, what you need to know before doing upper limb to duplex scan. We try to have one camera on the patient and the probe, another camera on the duplex machine to explain the bottom. And in between the two, uh, the two weeks, we'll give every couple of days a pathology with a picture and image for you. I think it's a scenario of having two hours not much uh, more information over not to lose concentration and to have one week interval because i know all of you are very busy with operating list outpatient clinic multiple engagements so i cannot concentrate the course over three days because you probably will not be able to have three days on continuous but we'll have let us say i want you to study one hour per day reading about duplex uh, reading about some videos and then we'll, after the one week, hopefully information starts gradually to trickle in. And if you have any case you want to do duplex scan, come to Vascular Art Center, book your duplex case, and he will be able to assist you. Now, this is a normal right mid subclavian vein. Subclavian vein run under the clavicle. The part under the clavicle, you can't do compression. But the part below the clavicle, you can do a bit of compression. Above the clavicle, you cannot do compression. So this is the mid part, which is below the clavicle. And this is a picture on B mode. You can see it's an abdominal transducer. We'll try to see that with linear transducer as well. And then you start to have color window to get this information. And you start to have doubler signal to these signals. So here, this is a normal size mid subclavian vein patent with normal waveform. And this is the information that we collect about this vein. Uh, again, another picture of how to get information, combination between the B mode, between um, uh, the waveform, spectral waveform, and the color analysis. Axillary vein, again, is important vein for you to know to avoid uh, or exclude axillary vein thrombosis, which uh, can happen with multiple causes, as we have mentioned. And this is a picture that we're able to get, and we'll see the patient we have. So I got here multiple pictures. Um, I can't see if you have any questions or not, but uh, I hope over the five minutes break that we are going to have to uh, get um, to get your question. Hopefully, we'll answer it. If not answer it uh, live, I will try to answer it uh, over the few coming days. Uh, I have here attendance uh, three very eminent vascular consultant with me um i can ask them if you have any questions regarding upper limb okay they all have done the lower limb duplex scan they will all do today the upper limb duplex scan and hopefully we'll have a, a lot of discussion about doubler angle about the sniffing test about direction of flow about clinical indication and believe me you are the one which sees a patient and if you ask the doublex, you have the clinical question in your mind. I remember a lot of radiologists, when they get a request to do doubler, they come to me and ask me, what is the clinician want of this? For example, if you have just done a radiocephalic shunt and you want to do doublex next day, what is the information you're looking for? You want to know if the shunt is patent or not? Is it going to have a good flow in superficial vein? Obviously, has not matured. How you can measure the flow? In the shunt, and this is important, we know the role of five. And is there any stealing phenomena or not? And now there is a new indication. If you are going to do endovascular arteriovenous shunting, then you must see um, how you are uh, the relation between the ulnar vein, ulnar artery, and are they far away from each other or very near? Is there a perforator? that can connect it to superficial system in order for you to have an access. And shall you do it on ulnar vein, ulnar artery better, 
or uh, radial vein, radial artery is better. All this information you grab it by duplex is obviously much better when you do the duplex mapping yourself. You know how the vein looks like, how the wall looks like, and you can book your uh, patient. So I hopefully I have finished the uh, first part of the um, first part of the um, uh, of the upper limb venous duplex scan, and hopefully we'll go to the second part uh, after having five minutes to break. So you can have a nice cup of coffee, cup of tea, and then we'll see our three vascular consultant doing the duplex scan. I will do the one first, and each one will do one.
تقدر تبتدي دلوقتي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, as I said always before you start the duplex scan uh, you tell the patient your name and this is what you're going to do it will take about 15 to 20 minutes and it doesn't cause any pain and this is called the verbal consent uh, secondly you must have a clinical question you want to answer so for example my dear colleague here he's been booked for arterial venous shunt tomorrow and they want venous mapping to the upper limb so you know immediately that your questions here is to see cephalic vein, basilic vein, at elbow region, at the wrist region, what are their diameter, and are they thrombosed or not, and how to proceed further. Um, the situation, you hold the probe, not to be kinked in that area, you have to be very careful, take a nice curve, and then uh, we'll, we'll try to get the information we're looking for. Always put gel, as we said, air is the enemy of a duplex scan. Um, so I will speak in Arabic to the patient again to show you the introduction. Assalamu alaikum, Zayek. Kullu tamam. Hanamil isha'a ala idak, fash haga tawba. Inshallah, ulaw hasid buwaga. Fa ayi marhala. Ulli da biyoga. Wa afa ala tuli inshallah. Tamam. Il isha'a di abara na na bahot gel. Wudi has. الجهاز دوت بيمشي على الجلد بيديني بعض المعلومات على الأوعيد okay. so this is called the verbal consent let us try to buy internal jugular pain so here I got very important anatomy and I got here a colleague with me um, here I can see the pulsation what looks to be the common carotid artery and the internal jugular vein This is just the by B mode, nothing else. And this is the thyroid, and this is the cutaneous and the platysma. To confirm this, let us put color. Here is a color. You can know from the color that this is pulsating the structure. And you can see here, this is not pulsating the structure. And if I press more, it is compressed. Not fully compressible, but it is compressed. Okay, I want to confirm that this is common carotid artery. Then what I will do next, pulse wave. And you can see here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but this here that I have the bottom. This is always in the in the GE series. They got very nice hand set for your left hand to put here. They got uh, six bottom that they don't have any name on it because they change with each maneuver you do. So, for example, here, this is a steer, and I did explain the angle of a steer. Why I have very nice color here? Because I got an angle to the vessel. But if I cancel this angle, let us have here. If, if you make it perpendicular, also because this is a very good machine, it still give you a color image, but at least optimal to have a steer. This is different steer, okay? So here is a steer for color window. Let us have the pressure wave form. Always arterial should be above the line. So here you can have invert. As a general rule, as a general rule, arterial above the line, venous below the line. You can have it vice versa, but you must convert it. And this is arterial and this is venous. And if you want to do doubler, you better do it on longitudinal, on LS, not on TS. But this is just to show you that this is common carotid artery. No question about it. We'll have on the fifth uh, fifth session the carotid duplex scan and how we deal with peak systolic velocity. So I will remove the freeze. Now the structure that we want to know is this one. Okay, and let us see the pulse wave here. Now it started to become apparent. It's a big blue structure. So this is the internal jugular vein, and let us see the pulse wave. Sometimes they call it the C wave, the Mogat al It goes with respiration. 
and I will show you the respiratory variation. What does this mean? It means that there is no blockage from here until superior vena cava. So this is good information. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, you can do it. Yes. We're trying to move the camera in order to be easier for you. You hear the respiratory variation? You can see my hand. I hope the camera position here is much better. Uh, Dr. Mustafa Shell is adjusting the camera position. Okay. So this is very good information because it tells you that you don't have blockage in superior vena cava. Let me check this is a solid variation. I will tell the patient, take a deep breath and hold it. Hold the hascamic. Breathe again. You can see, obviously, when he stopped the breathing, there was nothing. Okay. So this will confirm that this is due to the respiratory variation. You always have LS. This is nice LS. Here it is. I will try to get you the artery and the vein in one view. Let us remove the Doppler, concentrate on the color. And you can see the artery is red because the blood uh, cells is move, moving toward the probe, while the vein is blue. Some area here is red because is, is the angle is, is not fully. But what I want you to know that it's reverse direction because sometimes subclavian vein should have a flow going down. Sometimes you can have a flow going up. If you get central vein occlusion or a stenosis, so the subclavian vein blood flow will go up, going to transverse to the other side going down to the left in nominal way. So here we don't have this information. So again, TS, 2S, common carotid, internal jugular. You, you always have very small hands. If you do any pressure, any mild pressure, except the people who have tricuspid incompetence. Tricuspid incompetence will get you very high venous pressure. If you remember, there was a sign called the Corrigan's sign, which you get pulsating neck veins. You can see the pulsating neck veins by doing Doppler. So, and here is the, I'm trying to get the TS and LS. So I know now that this is internal jugular vein. I will follow the internal jugular vein. Here it is. And then I'm going down, down. I'm trying to go down to the chest. Here is the subclavian vein. You can see this view. Subclavian vein, internal jugular vein going to superior vena cava. It's a beautiful view. Here it is. Notice that the vein is always near the artery and you get transmitted pulsation. So here, when you get the Doppler signal to the vein, you get a mix it. Venous wave and the arterial wave because the artery is beside the subclavian artery. So it causes pulsation. But I am at the subclavian vein. I can see color saturation and I can see Doppler. Okay. So now I know he doesn't have subclavian vein thrombosis. Freeze, and then you write, blah, 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 um, write subclavian vein, and you put it here, and then you put print. Uh, and this is you do all over. But I don't want to waste time uh, doing this, but I want you to know. So here is a beautiful picture of subclavian vein, internal jugular vein combined to know the innominate vein. Now we'll go to the above the clavicle. I will try to see subclavian vein at the above the clavicle. Let us remove the Doppler. We need here only B mode and color. Here is the subclavian artery. You can see the subclavian artery. You try to look beside it and notice that the subclavian vein at this area behind the clavicle is, is not easy to see. So I, I will go to the infraclavicular approach, which is below the clavicle. Here, subclavian artery, subclavian vein. You can see below the clavicle, artery and vein. Confirm it. 
compression. You see compression, affects the vein, but not the artery. Here's the artery. You can see it's enlarged. And uh, I can see the flow in it. Here is the flow, which, because it's a little bit away, it starts to have a combination of waves between central vein and peripheral vein. But you can see this is a picture of the subclavian, uh, artery subclavian vein. This picture is important. If you want to do subclavian vein annulation, you can do it on duplex. You can see here, I can see subclavian. I will put the needle on that side of the probe. Here it is, which will come from here. And then you go with the needle to the subclavian vein and you push your wire. And this is to avoid injury to the pleura or injury to the subclavian artery, which can cause a big hematoma. What to do if you puncture subclavian artery? Get out and do compression. What if it persists and also the aneurysm? You try to go transfemoral, put a covered stent to try to solve this problem. Or if you have a closure device, you can, as long as the wire is in, you put the wire in and you put a closure device uh, to use it. So let us go to his clinical question. He's going for a, a B shunt tomorrow. So uh, we want to know the cephalic and the basilic. You can see, obviously, his vein is engorged here. So this is a lot of muscular people will get vein engorged. Let me look at the subclavian vein. It usually go into the deltopectoral groove, deltoid muscle and pectoral muscle in that groove. But I can see a small scar here. So maybe this scar, something has happened to the vein. So let me look here. I put a little bit of gel. I'm looking for the vein. Okay. Well done. Sometimes it's easier to find the um, cephalic vein from the, you can see from here, from the elbow. It's congested here, apparent. I put my hand here. Here is the cephalic vein. Okay. Here it is. This is a cephalic vein. I will get you zoom. Okay, let us zoom in. Here is the cephalic vein. Because I'm looking, he's very subcutaneous. The distance of skin is very subcutaneous. So cephalic vein at the elbow, I want to freeze. And then I will say, I want to measure me. Okay, so let us see. Do you measure the AP or the transverse? Both of them are good. But I usually take the minimum of them because you, exactly because you always have a bit of compression. So the transverse is always longer than the AP. But the one we rely on is the, the shorter diameter. So I will say to the clinician, which will be you, you will be open it. So let us uh, say here set. Okay, and then we'll go down. And you can see here it mentioned it is 3, 30.3 centimeter, which is 32 millimeter. This is good. This is good because this is the transverse diameter. So this cephalic vein is good. Now the question, how is the wall and is it thrombosed or not? Compression, fully compressible. Fully compressible. Try to put color. Try to keep color window up. Not much color really because there is no much of a flow. But if you have an augmentation, I press here or squeeze blood up. Squeeze it up, you can see little bit of flow, but here is not a high flow. So you don't get what at least this is a cephalic vein. We know that its diameter is suitable. And then let us follow the cephalic vein or see a little bit of segment which is on the tissue. I remove the color, remove the freeze. Okay. Here is the cephalic vein. Cephalic vein. How you know the cephalic vein between the fat? Compression. Fascia, superficial fascia. Fat is not complete. You can diagnose a lot of tough muscle tumors and so on, and uh, abscess, abscess cavity. You diagnose a lot of things when you have the sonar. So I will follow. Is the cephalic vein here? It is. Here is a cephalic vein. I'm going up. I'm going up. Each couple of centimeters, you do compression, and then it looks okay. I would have to have a quiz as I 
always have a bit of reassurance every couple of, because we always worried when you are looking for the machine about their body, what is going on, what is seeing, I'm not seeing. Here is the cephalic vein again. Okay, looks fine. I hope the picture you can see it and the screen here you can see it as well. Now let us go to the cephalic vein near the radial artery, which is very, very small. Thank you very much. What is this structure? Radial artery, excellent, because I have a compression. Let us confirm it by color. Yes, pulsating. Let us put the Doppler probe, confirm it. This, I want you to know the signal. This signal is no diastolic filling signal, which is good like this. And this is the same signal you will see it in external carotid artery. Just by hearing it. So it gives a peak systolic. You notice that he has a quadruple waveform, which means his arteries are very elastic. Up, down, recoil up and down again. And this is four phases. This is, we rarely see it in very healthy arteries, but we don't see anymore. Uh, secondly, it has here an auto angle. In the past days, we used to adjust the angle 60 degree. But if you notice here, there is auto angle correction 60 degree. And it mentioned here your angle is 60 degree. So this confirm if you want to do fixed systolic measurement, this is confirmed to be right. So uh, what is the different signal with the internal, internal carotid artery? It will have a diastolic filling, which will be like this. So the S3 is a fill those that, and you will see this when we do it to the carotid uh, session. So here is the cephalic vein, which is near the radial artery, down below. Radial artery, cephalic vein, radial artery, cephalic vein. So if you want to do endovascular, endovascular AV shunt, which is quite expensive still, this is the information that you want. Vein near the artery. Let us see where is the basilic vein, uh, one of the alternatives to do shunt. You go to the cubital fossa here. Now, what is this structure? Brachial artery and venacomitant, exactly. You see the two venacomitant, which is quite big. Some people can do the AV shunt with the venacomitant, but they are the structure. You must know them. These are the two structures. Mustafa. Brachial artery to venacom. You can actually diagnose if you have thrombosed the venacomitant or not. So how easy it is to do transbrachial function? Pretty easy. You just have this is a TS and you move it to LS like this. And you can do function either TS technique or LS technique and both of them. And you need to lower the color gain a little bit because you can see the color gain is quite a lot. It's filling up the screen. Now I'm lowering the color gain a little bit. Okay. So this is the, how easy it is to do transbrachial function. Let us go to the basilic vein. Excellent. Very good. Let us remove color. Let us see the black and white first. Here is the basilic vein. Let's put color. Here it is. Go down to see how far it is. I usually give them the measurement and write it on the skin, how it looks like. So this is the brachial artery. And here is the basilic vein. I will freeze the basilic vein. I will get measurement. I will go to the shortest diameter uh, to be on the safe side. And then I will say pressure set. Okay, measure from here to there. Again, it is 35 millimeters. So you have 35 millimeter and you have 32 millimeter. As long as this is about three millimeter, you're free to do anything you like. And you can have the same measurement in the hand. And for freeze, okay? Now, um, after that, 
I wanted to show that even the Palmer vessel and the digital artery, you can still see them, especially people who have um, uh, hand ischemia, steel syndrome, and so on. And let me show you here how you can see the superficial and deep pulmonary arch in the hand. And how easy it is. This is the deep pulmonary arch. Here it is. And this put the Doppler wave. Get color again. Excellent. Doppler wave form. And then I want to invert arterial above the line. And this is the signal you will not see it in renal disease. You will not see it with people who have thrombosed the radial artery. You will get a lot of requests. They do a lot of transradial coronary intervention. Uh, his hand is cold. His hand is uh, pulse oximeter is not recording. There is very few people who do assessment of duplex scan. Not only this, but the future is transdigital intervention. So you can do the digital artery as well. Now, I think I've done a quick review all over. I would like mainly to see the vascular surgeon doing this procedure. Each one, I will give him a clinical scenario. This is a scenario. And I will ask him special question that he likes to answer with duplex. Um, I, I will start by Dr. Mina because he was uh, didn't take a good chance the last time. Then Dr. Mustafa is in the clinic. So uh, if you like to come, uh, my dear is Dr. Mina. And I will ask you to. OK. Uh, Sit down, yes, and uh, the question uh, I will ask it to you is, um, um, uh, let us say, uh, this patient have severe pain in the forearm, okay, and he taken an antibiotic injection. My question, does he have a superficial thrombophlebitis in the forearm veins or not, okay? Let me see how you can get this information. Good. Yes, very good. Excellent. Very good. He is now checking internal jugular vein. Because sometimes when you get superficial thrombophlebitis, you want to know is it converted to DBT or not. Okay. So where is the right and left hand side? You can see this sign logic, logic P8. This sign here, it will tell you that this is the lateral side of the bro, which is the vein you can show us. Excellent. Yes, this is the vein. Because you can see it, it fills up and comes down, fills up and comes down. Now you need to help with color. Excellent. Good color. color. You move the, your hand a little bit much quicker. Uh, I'm at the magnification. I will lower out the zoom. Uh, remove the color. And then I will zoom out, which is this one. Okay. And then I need to that's it. Very good. What is this gland? Thyroid gland. Why it is important? Now they do radi uh, radiofrequency ablation to thyroid instead of thyroidectomy. So you see a lot of radiologists doing this procedure. Yes? You can see the difference by just hearing. This is a venous waveform with, they call it arterial contamination. Well done. So he got information now that internal jugular is patent, respiratory variation, no problem. Okay. What would you do next? Okay, I'm on to the side. Well, well done. Well done. Okay. He started by B mode, which is usual. You can see structures here. What is this and what is that? He started to help by 
adding color information and then add Doppler. Notice that exactly. If you are in the middle of the artery, you get the best signal. But if you are in tissues near the artery, this tissues move. So it will also give you signal. But this does not mean this is an artery. It means this is a mobile tissues around the artery. Very good. Yes, subclavian, bizarre together. No subclavian vein. Now he went to the elbow. Okay. The elbow. We have two big veins, cephalic vein and basilic vein, and brachial artery. Now he tried to put TS to see the anatomy. Notice uh, exactly, yes. He tried to get the structure in the middle and tried to get his hand. You mm -hmm. can see he run a bit of compression, so it disappeared. Here it is. So this is the two vena committent with brachial artery. Now I will add color information to see. Color window, very good. Brachial artery. Arterial signal above the line, so we'll convert it invert. You can see this is quadruple signal. Up, down, up, down again. Okay, which means he got elastic arteries. It's a good sign. Now there is still vena cometa. Now this is the areas usually give injection. And if the patient is known to have high creatinine, five don't use the elbow for puncture. For lab, sometimes they put no puncture because this is the area that you want to do your shunt. So cephalic vein. And always a good venous shunt is better than a bad transplant. And you have to know that three days ago in Boston, Massachusetts, United States, they have done the pig, the first pig modified genetically, uh, modified genetic kidney transplanted to human. So now we started the era to get a huge amount of renal transplant from genetically modified pigs. And we'll see because the patient up till now, three days post-operative, he looks to be okay. And the kidney of the pig looks okay. So this will open a quite good field for renal transplant. Five, basilic vein, yes. Okay. Basilic vein near brachial artery. And you can see the muscles. You can diagnose abscess as well. If you have abscess in the forearm, can diagnose it. And then I will ask another question to the candidate after that. Okay. Here it is. Yes. 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 That's it. Very good. You can do augmentation signal. Sometimes you can see straight away. Very good. Notice that his hand skills is very quickly. And this is something is common with all vascular surgeons that I have seen and give them a chance to do the duplex scan. They always have a very good, a very good hand skills, how they move the probe, and they have the clinical, the clinical knowledge. They want what question do I need to answer? I want to know if there is thrombosis or not, and the extent of the thrombosis, going from where to where, and how shall I treat it? So this is that is why this is a very good uh, exercise for them i want to see dr asma could you please adjust the both camera uh, shukran uh, thank you very much dr asma i hope we are adjusting the cameras okay very good now dr mustafa will will give him another difficult question will say this patient have um um, have recent AV shunt, um, and I want to know if there is a steel foramina or not. Forget that we don't have a shunt, but how we can discover if there is a steel or not, which means what is the blood flow direction in the radial artery. For example, if the radial artery, the blood is going up, it means that there is a steel, ulnar artery going up. So here you want to uh, give me where is the radial artery, where is ulnar artery, and direction of flow and the peak systolic velocity. Okay? 
So he's right. not prepared for Dr. Mustafa. Dr. Mustafa was not prepared for this. It's totally new for him. Okay. <laughs> this excellent now he went straight away transverse group uh, you can see uh, i want to show you his hand yes, very good i will move this picture okay this is his hand. oh beautiful beautiful now we done above the wrist a little bit because here you have the bone and he's a thin patient and the probe in order to have a full contact, you must do this. And then Dr. Mustafa, which is just used the duplex last week. This is the second week and he done a beautiful adjustment. Now he's the bottom, you know, every bottom what it shows and what he want to know. And this is the picture. And he put the peak systolic velocity at the radial artery straight away here. And yes, okay, yes, it's auto angle auto correction, yes. But uh, usually for the artery, we can do peak systolic velocity on transverse section, but much, much better to do it on longitudinal section. So give me the radial artery on LS. He moved straight away to LS. He removed the Doppler probe. Now he is looking with the motion, which is called rocking. Rocking, which means you're moving the rib. Excellent. Excellent. You can see. Now he will confirm it by color. Beautiful. Beautiful. He confirm it by color. He has very steady hands. And he put the Doppler probe in the middle. I will do the inverter for you. Going up. Peak systolic velocity is written here and angle correction, angle is 60, so you're sure. So this one is, um, uh, let me see, it's can't read it, 40, 40, which is normal, peak systolic velocity. But we want to ask about the direction. So notice here, the blood flow radial artery is red in color, and the color window is here. So that means that the blood is flowing towards the probe from here to there. Okay. So he must know where is the upper end and where is the lower end. Notice here logic eight. Yes. And you have the bottom down by his hand, which means that the radial artery direction from above below. So this is normal, not a reverse direction. Okay. Sometimes you get reverse direction, as we said, in steel phenomenon. So this is excellent for radial artery. Let us do it for ulnar arch. Now notice now they have transradial, transulnar coronary intervention. So he goes with two caster, one radial artery, one ulnar artery, and they get a lot of complications. The third patient will use another great duplex machine when it is ready to come and to bring it here. So for you to see a lot of different machines. Ulnar artery is, is more difficult picking up than the radial artery. So now he is seeking the ulnar artery. We want to see the tissues. He's doing rocking. Usually you get a black structure with no tissues. Excellent. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, he admits. So now I want to show you his hand. Here is his hand, longitudinal, ulnar artery. He got the information, the B mode, color, peak systolic velocity, measurement, corrected angle, and the direction is from above to below. Okay, let me get peak systolic velocity in deep palmar arch. Okay, and because the is very eminent vascular surgeon. He's excellent, and I want to push his skills to the limit. Uh, a lot of duplex reports that you will see. No one will give you a comment about superficial and deep palmar arch. Mm -hmm. 
So this is another important question. And the next question for the next candidate will be this patient we are planning to do endovascular arteriovenous fistula for him. And we want to go from radial artery to radial vein with the two um, radio frequency caster. So I want you to see the brachial artery when it bifurcate to radial ulnar. Follow the radial and tell me where is the radial vein and what is the distance between them. Okay, so this is a clinical question for the second. His name is Dr. Magdi. Where do you work? Private, okay. He is in mainly in private practice and he, he do duplex in his own clinic, which I encourage every one of you to start this journey now, early in your career. Beautiful. You can see that this is the deep palmar arch. Dr. Mustafa have done a beautiful technique. He put his hand transverse. You can see the picture. Don't believe it. It's very good, Dr. Mustafa. This is amazing. Fantastic. With Doppler angle, it's fantastic. So this one definitely does not have Reynolds disease, does not have radial ulnar uh, artery ischemia or thrombosis. And this is the quadrat quadruple waveform. So he got fantastic uh, hand movement from a fantastic duplex scanner. What can I say? So this is the deep palmar arch investigated by uh, Dr. Mustafa, who just he got the artery in what? 15 seconds. Excellent. Well done. So we'll go, we'll go to Dr. Magdi, and Dr. Magdi will give him another duplex machine. So we'll get this one aside. Okay. And we'll get another duplex machine, and we can maybe try. Okay. Now, uh, let me give some explanation about this machine. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, here it comes. Yes, this machine. This machine. Uh, it's all right. Okay. Now this machine, you can see, this is all what you need to have in your clinic. Okay. This machine is in particular is called the Sonomi. Um, yeah, Sonomi, which have two probes: the linear probe and the abdominal probe is all what you need. You can do arterial, venous, carotid, abdominal, mesenteric. You can do a lot of things, okay? And you don't need to buy the big machine. And you will see the amount of formation we're going to get. So for this, um, yes, we need to, to hold it. Uh, and I, this is now ready for the leaner, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So you have the leaner, the probe, and here is the gel. But they, they want to see the screen. So you have the screen ready? OK. So we'll get. Uh, sorry about the camera situation for people who are watching me. I'm just in, in the clinic here. I'm trying to give you the maximum benefit to see his hand on the patient and the duplex machine as well, um, both ways. So here is the, uh, the machine that we'll get. If, if this camera can go through this switch, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think by the time he turns on, I think we can start by this one, okay, until he's ready. Okay, we'll put it here. Okay, so now I clinic information. I've told him that we want to know. Uh, no, we need to solve. That's okay. No scale to start. طبعا عيان قالوا التليفون ما فيش مشكله برضه ده بيحصل في الكورس كورس دوبلك صراحه ويل جيت ذا ماشين اوكي اوكي لا طول شيء صح السعوديه طبعا طيب ذيس از ذا دوبلك ماشين ناو ذا كلينيكال كويشن ناو ذيس بيشنت واز فور اندوفينس ارتيريال وات از ذا دوبلك سكان وي وونت تو نو ذا انفورميشن about where the brachial artery bifurcate, does he have an ischemic radial or ulnar artery, and what is the relation to vein? What is the distance between them? 
So let us see how we can answer this question clinically. انت ريدي؟ اوكي. طيب انا معلش يا طيبه. اتفضل. اوكي. اوكي. اتفضل. مهم اول انتروداكشن. فيري امبورتنت لان ناس كثيره من اللي بيخشوا امتحان الزماله في الام ار سي اس وان دي هاف اكزامين ذيس ابدومين دي دونت انتروديوس هيم سيلف. دونت منشن وات هيز لوكينج فور. دونت منشن فور ذا بيشنت. So we'll get the two cameras. Uh, we'll try to get. Jelly as that. Hey, Where is brachial artery? Okay. Okay. Now, where do you think just by B mode is the brachial artery? I think it is this one. I think, but I'm not sure. So, color, we need color. Okay. Color window. Okay. You can see the color saturation here is is not not to the maximum level. Uh, they can't see really color. Okay. We'll try to shift quickly. We need a little bit of adjustment for the parameter here. Okay, we can continue with this one. Okay. Sometimes you need to adjust the setting, but we'll see the same probe, same machine, and I will change here into this one. Yeah, excellent. Okay, very good. Excellent. Now you can see here is the brachial artery. Okay, excellent. You can see color saturation. Now it is full of color. Notice there's something here. You get the swirling movement because you get the red up and below and blue because sometimes the blood flow is in laminar flow swirling. We'll see this in the common carotid and carotid bulb. So this is common carotid. Tell me how do you know the bifurcation? TS wins it down. So now he is at the TS common carotid artery. He has been a committant, and he, he will move down until the level of bifurcation, where it bifurcates to radial and ulnar. Where is the bifurcation? I think it is. Okay. okay. Now, which is radial and which is ulnar? So you must know what is media and what is lateral. Okay. Okay. It's going down. I can see branch here taking off far away, and this one. So this one of them is radial artery, one of them is ulnar artery. Now, which is which? You will know easy if you just press with your hand here. It is there. So this is lateral, which is lateral. So this is radial artery, and this is ulnar artery. Okay. So now we know radial and ulnar. Well, the surgeon want to do anastomosis between radial artery and radial vein. So what is the distance between radial artery and radial vein? Notice this is ulnar artery, and this is the vein around it. This is the radial artery. If you want to follow it down and see the vein, and is it nearby or not? It depends on your pressure. If you press hard, you wouldn't see that's it. Excellent. You see, the vein is just beneath, just beneath it. Okay. And here is another vena committant. Then we can go down. Excellent. So vena committant. And then we need the radial vein, which is big vein near, near the radial artery, which is not constant. 
here we can't see the radial vein in the radial vein anymore we only see the radial artery and his hand is not pressing much so if it was me of course you can do venography you put a cannula into the vein and you inject to see but at least here i think maybe here is the radial vein i'm not sure is it a big diameter or not sometimes the duplex scanner can tell him you go for ulnar artery ulnar vein first or radial artery radial vein first because you know this information by duplex scan and some of them rely on venography before they start but here i think you did eliminate the radial artery very well but here is the vein here is the vein yes but uh, it is very nearby no much tissues but we couldn't do really a big vein so do the same for ulnar artery and ulnar vein excellent now he's going for ulnar artery ulnar vein you can see the two screens yes if it is if you want to do it radial art radial vein or radial vein is very small so maybe you try the ulnar CT venography is, is helpful, but not essential. You can do just the venography on table. So you inject the venography on table and you decide on the spot. And it's very easy because the same system with link, the uh, same system can apply radial artery, radial vein, and artery artery vein. So you do venography and you decide which one is best. The right is following up ulnar artery, longitudinal. Longitudinal, you're not looking for the vein, you're just looking for the flow. Okay. أنا ممكن خليه يحاول ده internal Doppler vein. Okay. Angle ما أنا عارف أكيد مش مشكلة. Okay. Now you can see this is usually the tissues that the ulnar artery passes through intermuscular tissues, which is the artery and the vein nearby. I think I think I have seen a bigger ulnar vein. So this patient, if you do endovascular you're better off with ulnar artery, ulnar vein, rather than radial artery, radial vein. Well, okay. I'm trying to see if there is any questions uh, on the board. Oh, please. Okay. Excellent. Rule of five. Rule of five, which is below more than 500 millimeter per second. Excellent. Automatic, like the auto angle. Now, when you get an artery, and you want to assess how much you flow in that vein inside, you just put the peak systolic velocity, you put it in the middle as a sampling video, it will mention here to you how much you flow per minute. In the old days, we used to have the median systolic velocity, not the peak, not the end systolic, median, multiplied by the square area in millimeter of the, of the vein. And this multiplication will give you the flow per minute anything below 500 is a little bit low above 500 is secure good flow it's automatic yes like the auto angle uh, nowadays there is a new duplex machine they have what's called red switch red switch give you adjustment to all adjust everything black and white adjust color adjust intensity adjust the auto angle so you can imagine it is becoming much much easier uh, yes, artificial intelligence. Now there is in Switzerland, uh, the uh, university in Switzerland, they do robotic, robotic duplex scan. I've done a lecture on it. Yes, and I hope you have seen it. It's uh, beautiful. Excellent. So I'll get you the other machine, not say, because it was the last, last uh, thing I wanted to have the internal jugular vein with the adjustment with this machine. So if you have the nice, uh, yes, this one, yeah. Okay, now I want you to show internal jugular vein and tell me if there is a reverse flow or not. Now we'll shift the camera to, to this screen. Okay, excellent. And this one, okay. And this will be the last test. And if you have any question during the week, there are two groups, one in Telegram and one in WhatsApp. And uh, if you have any question, just uh, Fire on your question, and we are delighted to answer. Now, if we can 
gives the explanation. Here is the common carotid artery, and this is the internal jugular vein with the pulsation. This is just from B mode. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing. To confirm it, color, then peak systolic velocity. Now you can add color, yes. Increase the window, yes. Go down, excellent. So this is the color. Okay, now we want the pressure. Um, peak systolic velocity, yes. Uh, uh, power doubler, uh, this is power doubler, one direction. Yes, and we need to lower it down into the artery. Okay, and we need to see the signal. Okay. Obviously, the control is from the iPad. It can be connected to iPhone, iPad, tablets, anything. Okay. So this is a bit full of this machine. You can see it's very small. Here is the signal. A lot of dazzling with the signal. Need to adjust the angle. Let me have the signal on the vein. So we need to get this in the middle. So we need to move. I will show it. Here is the vein. Yes. This is the vein. That's it. You can see uh, yes. the venous, venous waveform, which goes with the venous wave. Here it is. With our Mahabas Nafaso, I'll tool enlarge it. Um, good picture, good information. And then I want you to have longitudinal section. Nilgil power valve, Ragga color. Mish power Andrew is color, color flow. Okay, and then I want you to have longitudinal section, common carotid artery, and tell me where is the bifurcation, internal carotid, external carotid. Some people have high bifurcation. When you do carotid endarterectomy, you do dislocation to the mandible, which are very high. Here is the common carotid, and you are LS. No, you need to, that's it. Here is the common carotid, excellent. Usually, I think this is proximal, this is distant. So bifurcation will be here. Okay. So try to move the rope. Excellent. Because it moved to many planes, sometimes you can lose the plane of the artery. So you try to get it back. That's it. That's it. And you try to follow it up. Up till now, it has not. But here it is. This is the external carotid. Always the artery in continuity, internal carotid. Our branch is the external carotid, and this is the design for most of the arteries of the body. Artery in continuity, SFA. Our branch, profunda. In the arm, artery continuity, axillary artery. Profunda, brachial is the one which is out. So you always get the branch in continuity and branch out. You don't get the bifurcation, except that aortic bifurcation, which are equal. Uh, but this is a design in most of the body. So if you're not sure who's internal, who's external, the one in continuity is the internal, the one out is external. Excellent. Very good image. Excellent demonstration. And uh, I would like, uh, I think now we're reaching the end of time. Uh, and uh, I hope you have benefit from this uh, experience. Excellent. I hope you have benefit from the duplex experience, upper limb venous. I hope you all can read the chapter over the next week. All what I need is just one hour per day, not more, and one hour per day to study duplex. Uh, I have sent how you do reporting from University of Washington, duplex scan. You can do modify. I will send the my modification, which is duplex reported to upper limb, lower limb, duplex, and you can use it. You can modify it, you can add on it and remove what you don't want. And uh, hopefully next time we'll discuss lower limb arterial. And uh, we'll have the aorta, getting the bifurcation, the iliac, how to measure ankle peak systolic velocity, ankle brachial pressure measurement, and how to get all this information. After that is uh, upper limb arterial, that will mean four weeks. The fifth week is carotid endarterectomy. We'll have the carotid endarterectomy uh, duplex scan. And the last one is answering the question of all these five. So if you have this question, arterial, this question of venous, and we'll have variety of clinical scenario, duplex pathology. But I'm very happy today, Dr. Mustafa had shown us how he done deep pulmonary arch, um, peak systolic velocity, 
how we have done uh, who's reverse flow and what is not reverse flow. Dr. Magdi and Dr. Mina have showed a very high skills in doing Doppler scan just by two sessions. I'm sure this skill will help them in their career. They can do endovenous laser ablation. They don't need a radiologist to come and do the puncture. They will do all the Doppler scan puncture. And uh, I, I hope you have benefit of uh, this uh, couple of hours uh, Doppler discussion. Uh, happy Ramadan and wish you all the best. We close transmission. Okay. Please talk. We cannot send this is what we call it. Just leave the call. Yeah, she leaves the call.